Hello students, welcome to Study Hive. This is the third part of your third lesson that is metals and non-metals. Today we are going to learn about the metallurgical processes. So let us see how the metals occurs in the nature. See I have written the list of metals. You can see here how I have written them. I have written based on their reactivity. These first set of metals are highly reactive. They are highly reactive. This first set is highly reactive and the second set is moderately reactive metals and third one is very less reactive and they can be considered as least reactive among all the metals. So what we are going to do for the separation or isolation of these metals? How do we separate them from their ores? We use a special process called electrolysis. You have come across this process in the previous chapters. So what happens in the electrolysis we will learn later as they make a very strong between all the elements which are there in the free state we have to break the bond. That's why we are passing the electricity to break the bond here. The next one is using the reducing agents. What are the reducing agents we use for reducing these metals? We use carbon as a reducing agent as they are moderately reactive they make a very very weak bond as compared to these metals so we can reduce them easily using carbon we use usually carbon monoxide or coke as the carbon form next is this silver and gold and platinum these are mostly found in their free state they do not react with other elements in the atmosphere like oxygen nitrogen hydrogen that's why they are found in the free state so it, it is easy for us to separate these metals from their ores. Next before going for the extraction of the metals we will learn few terminologies and definitions with regard to the metallurgy. See first what I have written here ores. Minerals from which the metals can be easily and profitably extracted are called ores. What is mining? Extraction of minerals from the earth crust is called mining. What is Gange? The unwanted impurities present in the ore are called Gange. What are minerals? Naturally occurring elements or compounds in the earth crust are called minerals. Next we shall learn how the metals are extracted from their ores. It involves three steps. The first one is enrichment, second one is extraction and the third one will be refining. So what are the steps involved in? extraction of the metals first one is enrichment extraction and refining so what we do in the enrichment or concentrating of the ores we wash off all the impurities on the ores so there are so many impurities like soil sand etc which are attached to the ores we have to wash off all these impurities these impurities are commonly called as gange these impurities which are attached to the ores are commonly called as Gange. So there are so many physical and chemical properties based on their physical and chemical properties of the Gange it is separated. For example magnetic separation is used when the Gange is attracted by the magnet. So next step is let us see how do we extract different metals. Different methods are used for different kinds of metals based on their reactivity. Highly reactive metals like potassium, sodium, magnesium and aluminum, they are never found in their free state. So what we do with them? They are either found as sulfides or carbonates. So we use the you, we use the method called electrolysis for them. Why do we use electrolysis? Because they do form a very strong bond. It is very hard for us to break the bond by using only the reducing agents. Reducing agents cannot be used here because they do form a very strong bond. That's why you, we use electrolysis. Let us see how do we do the electrolysis process in the extraction of the sodium. So I have drawn a very simple diagram for you which contains one container and in that we have filled with the molten sodium chloride and we are passing the electricity using a battery when we switch on the battery we will when we switch on the battery when we close the key what happens the electricity starts to flow then what happens the electrolytic decomposition occurs in the 
this container so it will split the sodium chloride into na plus and cl minus na plus and cl minus on passing of electricity so sodium that is na plus is a cation which has positive charge chlorine that is cl minus has chlorine ion cl minus has negative charge it is called as cation anion so there are two types of radicals positive and negative so we have two electrodes which is called one is called as cathode another one is called anode cathode will be having negative charge anode will be having positive charge always anion moves towards the anode whereas cation moves towards the cathode you can see that nacl splits into na plus and cl minus na plus moves towards the cathode and cl minus moves towards the anode that's why you see release of chlorine gas near the anodes if you have any doubts regarding electrolysis i can do a separate video on this concept please don't hesitate to comment in the comment box students next let us learn how the metals of a metals in the middle of the reactivity series that the the, the metals which are moderately reactive are separated they are either found as carbonates or sulfide they are found as carbonates or sulfide for the sulfide ores we do roasting it is a special uh, special process which is done for the sulfide ores and for the carbonates we use calcination let us see what is calcination and what is roasting after both of these calcination and roasting we get the oxides of that ore after calcination uh, calcination of the carbonate ores we get the oxide of that ore after roasting of a sulfide ores we get oxide of that ore see see what we are doing zinc carbonate we are heating it in the limited air so calcination is heating the ores in the limited air to convert it into oxides what is roasting sulfide ores are converted into oxides by heating with the excess of air so here we are supplying with a ample amount of air whereas we are limiting the air here we are limiting the oxygen supply here so see i have given the example zinc carbonate when the air is limit we heat it and it gets converted into zinc oxide and carbon dioxide is released so what is happening here zinc sulfide we do roasting for the sulfide ores when zinc sulfide is heated with a lot of air that is a lot of oxygen is supplied then it gets converted into zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide gas is released so after roasting we got oxides of both the metals you can see zinc oxide is obtained here and here after obtaining oxides of the metal we use reduction of the metal using either coke or carbon monoxide as reducing agent we reduce them and we obtain the pure metal after obtaining the metal we also have to undergo a special process called refining of the metal we use that is used for purification of the metal students let us see how the least reactive metals that are the uh, metals which are in the lowest in the reactivity series are obtained see they are usually found in their free state because they are not very reactive that's why they are found in the free state but some of them are found as sulfides see for example mercury sulfide is there so when we heat it with the with the passing of a lot of air we get mercuric oxide this oxide is again heated to get the mercury in the free state so this is what happens in isolation or obtaining of mercury from their ores but most of the cases like platinum silver gold are found in their free state just we have to concentrate or we have to purify the ore we have to remove all the impurities from them so next step in the extraction of the metals is refining refining involves further purification of the metals by removing all the impurities present in it 
so we are going to study only the electrolytic refining of metals but there are also so many refining methods like zone refining vapor phase refining chromatographic methods etc you are going to learn all these things in your 12th standard but in this 10th standard we are going to learn only the electrolytic refining see what 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 the setup here is a big beaker is take a big uh, container is taken we are doing refining of copper so what anode is used as a impure metal after doing ex concentrating and extracting whatever the metal we got we use here as a anode so the impure metal after extracting is used as the anode so pure method pure metal that is copper one pure copper strip is used as a cathode when we pass the electricity what happens the the liquid here is acidified copper sulfate any of the salt solution of the same metal has to be taken as the solution here so we are acidifying it to increase the conductivity what is happening the pure metal will get attracted towards the cathode this is positively charged radical this is cation that's why it is moving towards the cathode this is cation positively charged that's why it is moving towards the negatively charged cathode so what happens all the impurities start settling down near the anode that's why this is called anode mud so what is the setup here we have we have a big container with anode as the impure metal and cathode as a pure metal whenever whenever we pass the electricity the pure metal goes and starts depositing on the cathode and the impure metal starts settling down near the anode that's why it is called anode mud students this was the end of extraction of the metals in the next class we are going to discuss about corrosion and how to prevent the corrosion so if you have any doubt regarding this chapter please do comment in the comment box and i'll i'll try to reply to every queries thank you please do subscribe to my channel like the video share with your friends stay tuned till the next class thank you